We are Mora Dumelang, Sunny Bonani, and welcome to The Ladies Club, South Africa's leading women's sports talk show. My name's Valen Kudley. Lebo is out of our lounge for today, but she'll be back with us next week once again. Thank you for joining us as we bring you all of the trailblazers and game changers when it comes to ladies' sport. Today we're chatting about women who are pushing the boundaries through dancing. You're welcome to get involved in the conversation on Twitter. It's so easy at sports at SABC. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. We're also on Facebook if you are still on Facebook uh, as SABC Sport. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. And the same thing on Instagram. Our awesome guest in studio today, dance sensation, absolutely gorgeous. And she's also in bodybuilding, Nombulelo Shlati. She is our game changer today. The world of dance is full of inspirational stories of women who have become masters of their art dancing and choreographing their way around the world. All of them have helped transform their style of dance, paving the way for the next generation and also taking South African dance around the world. Dance sport is competitive as well as being so aesthetically pleasing um, and we'll find out a little bit more about that. But first, let's put some other ladies in the spotlight. And as we look forward to the year ahead, it's still a canvas to be painted. But let's look back to 2018, the year of Casa Semenya. It couldn't have been any other year. She continued her dominance in her specialist 800-meter event, raking in medals along the way. She claimed the 800 and 1,500-meter double gold at the Commonwealth Games, and she also broke four national records. Are you inspired yet? Well, inspiration comes in many different forms, and as we always do, we like to start off the Ladies Club with an inspirational quote, and this one comes from former swimmer Penny Haynes. She says, focus on what you're in control of and do it to the best of your ability. Wherever you are, be there 100%. She is the only woman in the Olympic history to win both the 100 and 200 meter breaststroke events in Atlanta in 1996 and broke a total of 14 individual world records during her career. Certainly an inspiration. And at this point, I want to bring in our guest, our game changer for today, Nombulelo Hlati. And I'd welcome to the Ladies Club, first and foremost. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. As we got the show underway with that inspirational quote from Penny Haynes, uh, how do you feel about, about that? Just saying wherever you are and whatever you're doing, give it 100%. I mean, that is the best advice she could have given. You really have to give it your best. You have no other option but to give it your best. And it is, so, it is, it is such an inspirational quote. I'll use it myself. Uh, you will. You know, I got this, uh, as, I, as I was busy doing some research about just how competitive dance sports is around the world, um, I got this one from uh, the dance sports organization's website. It says, physical conditioning, hard work, stern discipline, mental training, as well as imagination are the prerequisites for athletes to achieve excellence in dance sport. The biographies of the top competitive couples tell the stories of inspired people in permanent search of perfection. Now, I look at the two sports that you're involved in, and I think you, that fits you. That's exactly you. Always it, in the search for perfection. Oh my gosh, it does. Um, I'm a perfectionist. And I always tell people that uh, that's who I am. And it's good to have perfection. But at the same time as well, I've also come to realize that even when you're at your best, you don't know that you're at, at your best because you are constantly striving for it. It, can, it has its positives and its negatives. Um, I would like to say I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> I'm striving for excellence, rather. And uh, I've matured now. So I also understand that as much as you want to be perfect, there's nothing as perfection. You can only truly give your best and be in that moment and give your best. Really, perfection doesn't exist. Wow, that is deep. And also something that we need to unpack a little bit more because mm -hmm. I think a lot of women actually struggle with that, especially in the kinds of sports that you're involved in. Yes. But hold that thought because we're going to be back. You can also get involved in our conversation. It's so easy, those women that are making ways when it comes to dance sport. We're off for a quick break and then we're going to continue speaking to our game changer today. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>
Welcome back. You're watching The Ladies Club. Thank you so much for staying with us. Get involved on social media, whether it be on Instagram, on Facebook, or on Twitter. At sports at SABC, at Lebo Motsweri, at Valen Kirtley. Just use our hashtag on all social media platforms. Hashtag The Ladies Club. We chatted to her before the break. Our game changer in studio, our guest that's uh, giving us some of her time today, Nombulelo Hlati. She was born into a dancing family with her dance champion sister inspiring her to embark on a career in the field. She's a versatile dancer, but has been national champion at every level in Latin American, from junior right through to senior. Uh, before the break, we were chatting a little bit about uh, achieving that balance mm -hmm. of knowing that you're striving for perfection but not being too hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. When do you think you finally got that balance right? <laughs> um, actually, I feel like I'm still on a journey. Even now, it's still a journey. It's not 100% yet achieved because, um, do you know, it comes with, it's, it's, it's an inner thing. It, it's how you perceive yourself. And because you strive, you want to please people as well. You want to get positive feedback from people. Yeah. So you're constantly finding yourself still struggling a little bit, but it comes with time and accepting. And also mental coaching. I think with any kind of sport, mental coaching is very important in a sense of how you use your mindset to see certain things because sometimes you, you can be so hard on yourself and be blinded to what's before you're in front of you. Yeah. So for me personally, I still feel like I haven't arrived. I call myself a recovering perfectionist. Um, I've, as much as you seem like you're enjoying, I think you're enjoying the pain more than the actual <laughs> achievement. <laughs> that's my opinion. That's, that's, that's what I felt. And um, now I feel like I want to help also younger girls, you know, to uh, like mentally uh, help them to see. I mean, you need, to, you need a healthy mindset for yeah. you to be able to achieve your best, honestly. And sometimes negative thinking or whatever wrong mindset you might have of yourself yeah. might hinder you, no matter how talented you are. Because some of the best dancers are not achieving the best result purely because of your mindset or what you see how you see yourself. Uh, is that the, the way that you approach dancing and, and, and the kind of perfection that it requires uh, when you are a dancer um, and the long hours that it takes to be a professional dancer, do you think that that is the reason why bodybuilding and getting involved in bodybuilding came so easily to you? <laughs> I think so too. Uh, I think so. I think so, honestly, um, because of, of it's it became second nature, but I also saw the toxicness that it can be. Because when you start following Instagram, you start following certain athletes, and you see how it's almost like it's a mind, mind thing, and how they just want to go for gold. And even though you say you are happy with your result, but you're never truly happy because you are number one. That's a fact. And I think it's the problem with perfectionists. Uh, maybe yeah. those, th those that are comfortable with themselves, they can say, Any po well, po I, I, I'm happy with my condition, or I'm happy with how I look, even if the result does not show. But the truth of the matter is, I think with perfectionists, they're never truly happy. Oh, well, I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it back a little bit <laughs> and how you got involved in dance. We yeah. know that you're from a dancing family, and it was mm -hmm. those wonderful big floating trophies yes, that your sister used yes. to bring home that really <laughs> made you think, hmm, I want to do this. Yeah. And, and with also the attention, you know, when you are a winner, people celebrate winners. And uh, my sister brought in trophies and the attention was on her. And she said, oh, I also won that, you know. Um, and it's the sign of victory. A trophy is a sign of victory. Plus traveling when you are young and you think your sister always leaving you behind. It's like, I also want to do that. I want to travel, you know. I want to bring in trophies. I want to make somebody proud. So, yeah. And how long was it from the time that you actually picked up dancing mm -hmm. to you really achieving? Because it was uh, quite a, a, a quick thing. You, you got into the dance floor, quickly learned, yeah. and then you were achieving gold. Well, I think it, it helps to have um, a trainer that, is, that knows what they're doing. So I think it was easy because I, when, when you're living with a professional at home who's constantly showing you how it's done yeah. and with also the interest and the zeal and the love and the kind of character that I was so it was easy for me to pick things up plus I suppose talent as well uh, who else would you say has been instrumental in your career okay. 
definitely the Koboko has been. Uh, she was one of my trainers before. Um, we looked up to her. She was the best in our country, and she was right there before me. And what better example to have a champion right, right at your own, you know, studio. So yeah, uh, yeah she's she's she, she'll forever remain uh, an influential part of my life. Uh, actually, speaking about her, we're going to chat about our trailblazer a little bit later on, but I think that you set that up beautifully <laughs> for us. Our leading lady today is Tsubokho Khobokwe. Tsubokho is one of the most revered and respected dance personalities in the country. She started her dancing journey back when uh, the Mafeking Cultural Center opened in her hometown when she was just a young girl. She's since risen to become an acclaimed professional world champion coach and adjudicator. Tsubokho has excelled in various dance genres and and remains the undefeated South African professional ballroom champion, as well as the undefeated Latin American South African champion, seven consecutive times, and a world class a professional dancer. Uh, so it's no wonder why she's, <laughs> yes. she's an inspiration yes. to you. But uh, it seems as if the Northwest has got the right moves. Of course, of course. Um, well, it's because of history. Um, well, Northwest, Mafike in particular was part of the Tatswana, and I think there was so much investment done for the arts. So it makes so much sense why we are excelling in that department because so much has been poured towards the arts then. So I'm a product of that. I'm reaping the rewards and I couldn't be more thankful. But you're also plowing back because you yourself are now a, a dancing coach. Yes, I am. And I've continued the legacy and I think Tebukho is proud. <laughs> <laughs> You've also followed in her footsteps in more ways than one, and that's in actually being involved in uh, celebrity dance competitions. Yes, yes, yes. So I've been blessed to have done Strictly Come Dancing, season six, seven, and eight. Um, I was a finalist in season eight. I was dancing with Nguli uh, Chirumbula, and it's not easy, but it's a rewarding experience. Just how difficult is it to actually be the professional dancing as you were this year with Dancing with the Stars, uh, dancing with somebody that hasn't danced before? You see, with, with teaching someone that you know that they're going to be there for quite some time, this is a limited space of time. I think the most challenging thing is that you literally have like three months. So you only have a first, what, four weeks a month to train them. Then now you're taking them on stage. Uh, Man, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's difficult. But because one has trained, like I'm a teacher or a coach, so I have some experience. They might not be the best of the best, or you might not gotten, or you, you know, whatever, how should I put it? You appreciate every move or every achievement that you have done with them, yeah. you know? Um, oh, my word. Uh, what else can I say about it? It must be quite a challenge being the woman, though, because dancing ultimately is led by the man. Yes. So when you've got a novice man <laughs> that you're having to compete with, surely that's also an added challenge, which I don't think a lot of people consider. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, for noting that. And it is, it is extra more harder because now when you are a, f a male professional dancing with somebody, with a female celebrity, you can take them practically wherever. Wherever you want, you know, you're the one that's controlling them. But with us, it's extra, it's harder now because now you, you, you need to be led. At the same time, you're trying to pull him. And with me, <laughs> I'm short and I haven't really gotten somebody my own height. That's so, why you got into <laughs> bodybuilding, actually, just so you can strengthen those arms. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, you, you honestly find your way through it. You just find your way. You... Uh, you also try and get some assistance, of course, so that you, things that you cannot see, they can help you out with. Well, you do it with absolute grace. We're going to continue this conversation. Remember, you at home can also get involved in it. It's so easy on the social media platforms. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. We up with our final segments after this.
Welcome back. You're watching The Ladies Club. And the lady that we've got as our game changer in studio is a lady that is pushing the boundaries when it comes to dance sports here in South Africa. The lovely, the beautiful Nombulelo Hlati. She also is not only a professional dancer, but she's also in bodybuilding. And she says that the two marry quite nicely because of the dedication and the focus that you need for both sports. But which one is king and will always be king in your life? Oh, dancing will always be dance. I mean... Well, I actually never thought that there'd be anything that could actually challenge my love for dancing. But building actually has. But wow. dancing really will forever be... It's what I love. It's, it's, my, it's what I breathe. It's what I eat. It's, it's who I am. I sometimes say, it found me, you know. Um, yeah. Were there it's ever my concerns, were, were there ever concerns that once you started getting competition ready for the bodybuilding competitions mm -hmm. that you may actually bulk up and be a little bit too muscular for uh, dancing and your Latin American costumes? <laughs> well, um, how do I, put, I get asked that question? Well, I've managed to marry the two and I think also it depends in which category you are in. Yeah. And also with, with bodybuilding, you know, there's a period where you are leaning up and you don't look as big as people think. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes you might look like you're carrying more weight. It's just probably fat. But uh, with, with, with the process of, of, of you leaning and, and actually achieving a certain body goal, body weight, it actually works quite, quite nicely. Um, it will depend if you now want to take it further and want to build if probably bigger muscle or whatever, then maybe it might be, you might have to consider the two, how do you want to marry them? I think at this point in time right now, because bodybuilding has been such a focus this year after Dancing with the Stars, um, it, for me right now, at this point in time, it's all that is consuming my mind. Okay. So it's not so much about how it's going to impact my dancing, but I've also seen people who are actually into dancing that are also doing bodybuilding. I suppose maybe it's the mindset of the competitive dancing part of it, but as, as a show dancer, your body always looks like it's on point. So it's what's acceptable, that's the problem. Is, is being skinny acceptable? Is having a little bit of muscle acceptable? Are you willing to take yeah. that body with you and challenge a mindset, see if it will be acceptable? At the end of the day, it's what makes you happy and what works for you. What would you say in your dancing career is your biggest achievement? Oh my word, I think for me, the experience overseas is priceless. We grew up um, watching videos, watching stars on videos and wishing we could compete at that platform. And to be afforded the opportunity to go and represent your country has been the greatest achievement. Even though you don't bring the result, you think in your own country you are the best because you're always celebrated. Then you go outside and you meet up with just as good dancers as you. And I mean, with dancing, it's unlike running, where 100 meters from there to there, it can be so clear that who's the winner. It's opinionated. Of course, there are ways to see uh, technically, technique, partnering, on all those things. But it's very opinionated as well. So for me, representing the country has been an eye opener. And to know that they are, there's a world out there. There's a bigger world out there and you constantly have to work hard and have the proper team to help you. What are your goals for this year and for the next five years? What is it that you'd like, that you'd like to achieve, whether it be in bodybuilding or in dancing? I've always dreamed of having my own dance school and I've always thought that I would work so hard towards my dancing goals and be top 24 in the world. And to my surprise, I'm doing bodybuilding, which I didn't even think at some, at some point they, there is such a thing as bodybuilding for women or I'd find myself there. And I find myself really wanting to also be afforded the opportunity to represent the country bodybuilding overseas wow. as well. Okay. Um, a dance school probably still something that I, I, I would love to have. And yeah, that's how I... My, only my own dance school. And also, uh, continuing with the reality celebrity dancing programs. So I want to know if you could choose any celebrity around the world to around dance with. Around the world? Yes, anyone. <laughs> Who would it be? 
around the world. Oh my gosh, I've never thought about that. It's always easy to say you want somebody that you think they could move because they have that, I mean, if you can find someone with natural talent, it's an advantage, probably lesser work. I don't know, maybe Asha? I don't know. Asha? He can dance. Yeah. <laughs> He's never done ballroom and, ballroom and Latin, maybe him. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. So, uh, maybe. Okay, so <laughs> what is, is, is Asha on the playlist then when you are working out? So who's on the playlist? Uh -huh. So what music do you like to listen well, to? Well, my music I like to listen to is gospel. Okay. Um, I love, I love Hillsong music. Okay. And most of the time, really, it's what I listen to. Okay. Yeah. And if there's one, um, a verse or maybe even a saying that you live by, what would it be? <laughs> uh, nothing is impossible for those that believe in God. I, 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 truly, I truly believe that there's nothing impossible. That is the verse that I live by. Anything is possible for as long as you believe. Um, and I've also come to believe that there's nothing as powerful as the mind. I've, I've, when I look at my journey, as much as I've achieved what I've achieved, but I think if I had mental coaching, probably I would have achieved far better. I think that is the one thing, because even the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he, no matter how mm -hmm. people tell you you're excellent. I've never gotten negative feedback all my life, but I've never truly felt like the best, you yeah. know? So I, I, I think the best thing really is if you could be helped to have a good self perspective or self awareness and have a healthy mind of what you think of yourself. So I think if you can win that part of you, truly, truly understand that you will forever be compared to someone. And that's okay. And you are okay. So for me, for me really, for now, I think people need to invest in, 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 in the in the way they think, in their mental, yeah, in the way we think. That's very important. I think the more you have a healthy mindset, you will achieve far better than you can ever imagine. Hmm. We like that. And we wish you all the best of luck for the <laughs> year ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Our game Thank changer, the beautiful Mambalelo Tlati, who is a dancer and also a bodybuilder, because that seems to be something that's really capturing your focus at yes. the moment. And you're a star at both of them. So we wish you all the best of luck for 2019. Thank you so much. All right, time now for us to say goodbye, au revoir, and we will meet again. You can continue the conversation on social media. It's so easy, hashtag the ladies club. And until we meet again, remember that Greatness is always earned and never ever given. Goodbye. Thanks for watching us on SABC.